What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Pances. If it's your first time tuning in, please be sure to smash that subscribe button. If not, thanks for your continued support. Today we are at it with my 2004 Saab 95. The last time we did a video on this was 2,000 miles ago. It was an update video on the car. We changed the oil, updated the grills, and uh, pretty much talked about what was happening with the car and showed that there was a slight oil leak on the oil pan. And I had mentioned I was going to wait till the spring to address it since it was like a minor leak and not really that big of a deal. But uh, 2,000 miles later, this car decided to spring a coolant leak. And luckily it is a minor leak. It's happening in the back of the engine underneath the bypass valve and it is, it is the hose assembly. If anybody's ever seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm about to show you right now that connects uh, the system to the uh, um, heater core into the dash and then into the engine and then into the bypass. So obviously you're bypassing that area if you're using your heat or not. This is what it looks like um, under there. I think it, I think it goes something like Something like this, I don't remember. I think this, where my hand is, this hose goes into the engine block and then those go into the bypass valve and the heat, heater core. So uh, it looks like it's leaking very slowly um, right here on the joint. So maybe the plastic is worn out or maybe one of the hoses are leaking. So anyways, for a hundred and something dollars, I just decided to get all of it brand new. So I don't play any guessing games as to which one is what that's leaking. So in today's video, not only are we going to be taking care of that, but I also decided, you know what, since it's wet, the weather's nice out today, I, uh, I purchased a kit off of uh, East Saab Parts that uh, combines the gasket maker and all of the new seals for the oil pan. So we have a new O-ring for the oil pan drain plug. We have all of the seals for inside the engine, inside the engine, which is once you remove the oil pan. And then you have a green seal here, which is for the dipstick seal which I think lives on the top of the motor, which I've never actually replaced ever since we've had the car. Uh, the last time I did this, which was 43,000 miles ago, 45,000 miles ago, I, uh, I changed everything inside the oil pan and that was about it. So in today's video, we're actually gonna go ahead and take care of it all. And I'm gonna put you guys on a time lapse because I've gone into the details of all of this so many times before. I think this is maybe my seventh or eighth time dropping an oil pan on a Saab. I feel like at this point, it's like a muscle memory and I should hopefully, knock on wood, do it very smoothly and very fast. Uh, but just to give you guys an, a, like a quick roundabout of what this looks like, we have to remove the, uh, we have to drop, we have to drop the exhaust, the downpipe. So that entails removing the two wires for the O2 sensors and removing this stuff here to get to the bolts on the turbo exhaust there, or excuse me, on the exhaust manifold. And then, and then once you do that, you go underneath the car and you slide the exhaust out of the way. And then you go ahead and remove the torque. Uh, on, this, on the 9.5, you go ahead and remove the torque mount on the subframe. So you can lift the engine up at later point in the game when you want to go and drop the pan down. And then from there, you remove the transmission plate with two 11 millimeter bolts, which helps you get to the 13 millimeter bolts on the oil pan on the driver's side. And then on the passenger side, you go ahead and remove the inner fender well cover to access inside this side of the bolts to the oil pan. And from there, it's a pretty straightforward of removing all the bolts to the oil pan and dropping it down. Of course, we're gonna drain the oil first. So that is pretty much the overview of the job. Uh, it is a little bit messy, so I have some cardboard and hopefully catch some excess oil. And I'm also hoping that I do it semi-fast. Uh, I don't think I have too much cleanup to do inside the oil pan since we've done it before, but we will pull it apart and inspect everything since we're in there. And I will give you guys the full rundown update. So without further ado, I'm just gonna hop into it off camera and I'll give you guys updates along the way and uh, should be pretty good. Alright guys, so here's your update number one. In no time, we have the exhaust down, we have the transmission cover off, and we have the torque mount undone. We have all the plastic covering undone, we have the oil drained, and I let that sit for like an hour seeping out to try to get as much out as possible. 
And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the bolts that are holding the pan up. But before I actually continue to make a further mess, you guys can start to see for yourself some of the oil seepage that's going on. And on this side is where it's the worst. You can even see some of the original gasket hanging out. So it's uh, time to do it. And you guys can see the moisture here. So uh, we're gonna knock this out and we should be good to go. And then we'll take care of the coolant leak. You can see where the back of the engine there where it's leaking, it's dripping down like right where my finger's pointing to. But I'll show you guys that later. Uh, in the interim, I put this big tool chest underneath the exhaust to kind of support it so we're not putting too much stress and pressure on the uh, flex pipe over there. Next thing we know that thing starts leaking, hopefully not soon, but uh, common failure on these exhausts. So, all right, I'm just gonna knock out these bolts and then we'll show you the inside of the pan. All right, guys, the pan is down. I will say that the seal was terrible on the last bolt. This, the pan just kind of fell right off, which tells me that the actual seal wasn't there. Usually if there's a good seal, you have to actually kind of take a little hedge, uh, little um, pry bar or flathead screwdriver and pull it off of the engine. And in this case, it just fell down. So here's the oil pan. We're gonna go ahead and you guys are gonna watch me. You guys are gonna watch me open this up for the first time since we got the car. 240,000 miles. And you're gonna see how the engine is looking. And uh, I'm actually pretty excited here. I got two more screws to remove on the sump pump. Okay. Here we go. And there's the sump guys, pretty clean. Close up for you. And there is nothing at the bottom of this oil pan, which is amazing. You guys can see it right there. You guys can see there, it's uh, just nice and clean, which is amazing, really amazing. So I'm gonna replace the seals on the sump pump and on the uh, return line in the engine with our kit, clean up some of this stuff that's in here and uh, reinstall everything. And it's nice and clean. I'm gonna put it back together the way we took it apart. All right, guys, I'm gonna go clean the underside of the car and put this back together. All right, guys, I think I did this whole thing in like an hour and a half. I'm not done, I just gotta put the exhaust back up, but uh, there you guys have it. A fresh seal on the pan, everything's nice and clean. I, uh, this, this type of red Loctite type of material that I'm using is uh, the recommended high heat temperature stuff that I like. The last stuff I was using was not exactly this, so that's probably why we had a little issue. Uh, in one of the next upcoming episodes, I'm going to be treating some rust under here with the rust converter, but I just did a little bit up here above the exhaust since I'm not going to be pulling it down again. Uh, let's see if I can get a good shot. You guys can see where that rust is. It is uh, going to do. It's going to be drying right now for a little while. You can see it converting slowly and then uh, we'll put some some paint over it but in the meantime I'm gonna put the exhaust back up and uh, wrap this part of the job up alright guys so update for you is we have everything back together for the oil pan job really straightforward I uh, threw some degreaser on this side before we wrap it up so I can uh, hose it off later but in the meantime here's an in a little 
preview underneath everything is clean I'm gonna get the uh, started treating some of the rust on the subframe here we'll continue to work on that and uh, let's see I think the next thing we're gonna do is that coolant leak and uh, then we'll fill it up with oil and should be good to go this uh, the seal is still drying so I'm gonna let it sit sit as long as possible but uh, everything is, is looking good guys I'm really excited about this alright guys so as we were in there getting ready to replace stuff I noticed that the old coolant bypass valve was the culprit leaking so I will go ahead and return those hoses since we don't actually need them and save ourselves some money in the interim I do have the new bypass valve so I'm gonna replace one of the vacuum lines that was down, down there that was rotting away and uh, put it back together and see what happens alright guys we are all back together I put a fresh oil filter on there and uh, the coolant bypass valve was replaced with some fresh vacuum lines and uh, I'm always a little nervous when we first start up because you just never really know uh, how things play out but I think we're pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and start the car and degrease the whole engine bay all right guys here it goes so nervous sounds good Back it out and clean it up. Yeah, sounding good, guys. Whew. Wow. Always nervous. Very good. Have it. Two hundred and forty thousand miles on this thing. And uh, it looks pretty much brand new. Um, it's like really unbelievable how this engine holds up if you take care of them. So my next oil change is going to be at 245,000 miles. Guys, so we're taking this on the final drive for today to the store. I'm going to get some coolant and top off the reservoir. And uh, I would say that this was the cleanest job I've ever done on the oil pan. I did cover up uh, the floor nicely as you guys saw and I covered up the exhaust manifold and I didn't get any oil on there so there hasn't been any oil burning. I cleaned everything really nicely and thoroughly. Um, so hopefully uh, since it's all nice and clean in a couple of days I'll just double check everything make sure it's all dry still and uh, we should be good. I, you know the gasket maker we used this time around was a much better quality than the first time we only got like 50,000 out of it. We should you should be able to get like 80,000 to 100,000 out of an oil pan seal. So 50,000 is a little premature, but uh, like I said, we weren't using the best materials on the last time there, so should be good to go. Car is running is running nice. Um, we replaced more vacuum lines there on the bypass valve, and um, I think I think the the uh, vacuum line issue I was having a couple weeks ago is actually what stemmed that that leak so there you guys have it we got full turbo boost and uh freaking rock solid here guys so stay tuned for the next video i hope you guys enjoyed this update on the 2004 saab 95 just about a quarter million mile saab and running strong and i think in the upcoming one of the upcoming videos on this car we're gonna just go underneath the car and touch up some more of the rust spots that were there i did a little bit today in this video but we're really going to do like an in-depth video and try to clean it up a lot and then uh, and then go from there. So stay tuned. Hope you guys liked it. Please like, share, and subscribe. See you guys next time.